more on what could come out of the APEC summit and President Biden and Xi's meeting. Let's bring in China Market Research Group Managing Director Sean Ryan. Sean, great to have you with us. It's great to be here, Melissa. It's hopeful time in China that there could be a mini detente of sorts between Xi Jinping and Biden when they meet tomorrow. But the reality is, I don't think there's going to be major great progress. I expect that China and the United States will announce some agreements on fentanyl crackdowns, on climate change. And I think that you're going to see Xi Jinping is going to want to launch a charm offensive to the American business community. He's bought record numbers of American soybeans last week, even though they're more expensive than Brazilian ones. I expect that maybe they're going to come to a letter of intent to buy more Boeing airplanes, which the Chinese haven't bought for six years, in order to ice the Americans. But I think the main thing, Melissa, is the two countries are talking again. When the heads of the two countries are talking, that builds up confidence, because confidence right. is really weak in China right now. And Sean, we are just uh, learning that President Xi has touched down in San Francisco just in, in the past few minutes. So uh, he is in country at this point. Um, when it comes to that charm offensive that you were talking about, Sean, what would be a win for President Xi when he meets with the leaders of various U.S. companies like GM and, and Tesla and Citigroup, et cetera? I mean, is, is he after more foreign direct investment? And does he have to walk a tightrope? you know, in terms of courting these CEOs, wanting their investment, but not looking like he's desperate. Yeah, it's interesting. So last week, when you read the Chinese state media, they said, we're not sure that Xi Jinping is going to actually meet with President Biden. We want to make sure that the Americans are actually offering olive branches to the Chinese. But this week, the rhetoric in the Chinese media has totally changed, and they say that we're looking for good relations. So I think Xi Jinping has already shown the people of China that he is strong and he's not going to bow down to what the Chinese consider to be bullying by the Biden regime. Um, so I think he's going to try to court FDI. Um, I'm American, but I've been in China for about 27 years. This is the worst business confidence I've seen in the two and a half decades that I've been here. FDI dropped 8% this year so far. China right now, the economy is weak. It's very weak and they need the GEs, the city groups. They need the American companies to keep investing in China. I expect the American companies will come in and start investing in 2024, which is why I think numbers, GDP growth numbers, will probably rise about 5% next year and outperform a lot of expectations. I'm hearing from a lot of multinationals from America that they want to come back to China. They're worried about the political risk, not so much from the Chinese side, but they're more worried from the Biden side. They're worried that the Americans are going to keep putting more sanctions. So hopefully with this meeting tomorrow, um, American companies will feel that they're given the go ahead by the Biden regime to invest in China again. Right. Uh, again, if you're just joining us, you're looking at a live picture there. San Francisco President Xi uh, of China has just touched down in, in San Francisco for the APEC summit. Sean, in terms of that business environment, though, how much it's all about risk reward. And for many, many years, uh, U.S. companies were willing to take the risk of the uncertainties of operating in China for the reward of booming growth. That promise of booming growth isn't necessarily there anymore. So how much of it is you know, diplomatic relations gone sour and how much of it is just the Chinese economy is languishing and the government there doesn't appear to want to throw it a lifeline? That, that's a great question, Melissa. I think that the economy is bad. It's really bad right now, but it's not as bad as people think, which is why the government isn't launching a stimulus. I've actually advised against launching a stimulus because you, you don't want to get too much indebted in China like the United States has. And frankly, local governments have run out of money because they spent so much money in 2022 um, on zero COVID implementation. You know, I'm sitting in my closet right now in my house in Shanghai. I was locked down here for three months in 2022 during the Shanghai lockdown. So local governments have run out of money. That's why they're not launching a stimulus. But I think at the end of the day, China is still the world's largest retail market. You're seeing numbers from Lululemon, Starbucks, Nike that are posting records, so there's still a lot of profits to be made. But American companies need to be cautious. It's not the no-brainer investment like it has been for the previous 20 years. So if you're in technology, if you're a company like Intel, if you're a company like Qualcomm, uh, it's probably going to be risky to invest in China right now because of the geopolitical tension. But if you're a company in F&B, if you're a company in cosmetics like an SD Lauder, then China's still the great market to be investing in. And that's where investors should be looking for the great consumer plays. Chinese consumers are nervous. 
They're cutting back on their spending. They're trading down. You know, they're buying Luckin coffee. They're buying products on the cheap on Pinduoduo, which is like a super cheap version of an Amazon. And they're shopping and going down. But they are. And let's remember, they're sitting on 2.4 trillion of household savings. So once the Chinese consumer feels confident again, they're going to start to spend. And I think that'll happen in 2024, uh, middle of next year.